Before we get started, there will be spoilers for the Thousand Year Blood War arc of Bleach in this video to come. The Thousand Year Blood War arc is great for Bankai. New Bankai, old Bankai, but also upgraded Bankai too. In fact, we established that when I looked at every Bankai that appeared throughout Bleach in a single video a little while ago now. There were tons of them in the final arc alone. And I think more recently, but still a while back, I made a different video going over all of the upgraded versions present exclusively in the final arc of the source material, as in order to keep some cast members relevant in the face of escalating power levels, Kubo revamped a bunch of older, perhaps slightly more static Bankai for the big climactic battle to ensure as few characters as possible were left behind. But in this video, I want to dial in the spotlight on a particularly gruesome upgraded Bankai, the mad scientist Mayuri Kurotsuchi's latest twisted creation, Konjiki Ashisogi Jizo, Matai Fukuin Shotai. Mayuri himself gets a lot of time to shine in the final arc, and I've even argued in the past that he was Soul Society's unlikely hero on the front lines during the war against the Quincy. And in his final battle of the series, Mayuri unveils his modified Bankai against the Soul King's left arm, Pernida Pankajaz. So let's take a look at Mayuri's new Bankai, how it compares to his previous one, the one most people will be likely more familiar with, and how strong it actually is, because from where I'm standing, this is now perhaps one of the most overpowered Bankai in the series, while still being incredibly fitting for Mayuri himself. Before we get started on the video, guys, if you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure to do that now for more Bleach content like this every single week. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up as well to help support me and the channel. And if you want to take that support for me another step further, I do also have a Patreon as well. And as always, I just want to give a massive shout out and say an enormous thank you to everyone supporting me over there on Patreon. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. But if you want to support me in an even easier way, you can check out my second channel, Mr. Tomo Talks Games. Whether or not you subscribe, whatever you choose to do I really appreciate you being here at all so thank you all so very much and to reiterate once again but there will be some spoilers for the Thousand Year Blood War arc in this video to come. Mayuri's original Bankai was of course the famous Konjiki Ashisogi Jizo. In the source material we see this Bankai only twice. Once in battle against Uryu Ishida in the Soul Society arc where fun fact this is the first Bankai we ever see in the series though it's decimated almost immediately, and then we see it again much later against the 8th Espada Xyloporo Grands during the invasion of Waco Mundo. Although Mayuri gets two fights in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, we never see this version of the Bankai in the final arc of Bleach. He doesn't feel the need to use his Bankai against Giselle at all, though one has to assume he has already transformed it by this point anyway, and then of course by the time we get to the final battle he has against Pernida, we see he has already evolved it. But Konjiki Ashisogi Jizo has an amazing design, and is a great example of the types of Bankai that I think are probably my favourite, though I can't say that with any real certainty as I love them all, but the ones where they manifest an enormous creature or creation behind the user are often some of the most visually spectacular and lend themselves to being my favourites. Some kind of a giant physical construct, you know, look also at Komamura's or Urahara's Bankai, for example. As you can probably glean from the name, Mayuri's Bankai is associated with the Jizo, known as Womb of the Earth, a guardian deity of children as well as a protector of deceased children in Japanese culture. You can see this in its design too. The Bankai takes on the form of a gigantic golden baby with an enormous bulbous head, two childlike arms and the body of a massive almost serpentine caterpillar. A silver halo encircles the creature's head while a crimson cloak billows on its back. This is one of Kubo's strongest designs, at least in my opinion anyway. The halo seems to hark back to the divine nature of the Jizo itself, and while Konjiki Ashisogi Jizo is a clear reference to the nature of the Jizo, fittingly for Mayuri it seems to be a bastardization of it. This Jizo is no protector, instead it is designed for killing, while the caterpillar is a symbol of growth, change and evolution. 
Again, perfect for the scientist always striving for improvement, and perfect for how Mayuri would eventually continue to alter and amend even the Bankai itself. And of course, the Jizo symbolism and the association with life and death only further increases when you learn how Mayuri actually achieved Bankai in the first place, and how it ties intimately into the history of the birth of his own daughter, Nemu. Mayuri and the 12th Division tried over and over again to create a self-sustaining konpaku, to create life itself essentially that would grow and develop on its own like a natural-born child. Their fifth attempt at birthing a Konpaku yielded an actual fetus, and Mayuri took that fetus and modified his Zanpak toe with it, enabling it to achieve Bankai. So presumably the form of the baby we actually see in Bankai is moulded from that original fetus that Mayuri used, which of course is disturbing to consider, but again, very in line with his monstrous and immoral character. But on a more conceptual level, the failed results of their experiments feel like a reference to those that are protected and guided by the Jizo. But despite its grandiose appearance, Konjiki Ashisogi Jizo's abilities are fairly simplistic. Upon being summoned, it spews a quick-acting, deadly toxin from its mouth in the form of a purple gas cloud that covers an enormous radius, and then often uses its huge bulk to slam onto enemies before trying to devour them whole. However, for a quicker death, the Bankai is able to sprout a nest of blades from its chest before charging its enemy with surprising speed. But that's about it for what the Bankai can actually do. And so to deal with the higher calibre of enemy in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, Mayuri decides it's time for an upgrade. Fast forward to the end of the Thousand Year Blood War arc as the Shinigami assault Yuhabark's final fortress of Varvelt. Mayuri comes up against the left arm of the Soul King and a living embodiment of progression and evolution itself, Sternritter C, the compulsory Pernodapanka Jazz. And, as is apt when facing an enemy that can continuously learn and transform almost endlessly, Mayuri reveals the newest tricks up his sleeve as well, activating Bankai. In a pretty cool moment, Yumichika thinks that Mayuri is about to summon the original Konjiki Ashisoki Jizo and tries to get the paralysed Zaraki out of the poison's radius. I like this, you know, even the 11th Division understands how deadly Mayuri's Bankai is. Its reputation must precede it. Crucially, Mayuri comes to the realisation that the left arm is able to continuously reproduce itself from its own torn off and destroyed appendages just before he activates Bankai. This enables him to factor in this key piece of information into his new ability. And what does that mean? Well, it's simple. In preparation for activating his newly altered Bankai, Mayuri collects data on his enemy throughout the course of the battle and sends it to his Zanpak Tou in order to help it prepare. When the creature's arrival is finally due, Mayuri activates Bankai, bringing his sword in front of him and an enormous fleshy purple mass bulging from the sword itself expands like a balloon up into the air in front of him. The transformation is over quickly, at least in how it appears within this chapter, revealing a completely new form, Konjiki Ashisogi Jizo Matai Fukuin Shotai. The original form of Mayuri's Bankai is seemingly gone entirely. In its place sits a squat, languid, obese, purple-skinned baby with a deformed head. The baby is draped in an opulent gold cloth, and from either side of its warped, almost sunken head, two lanterns dangle on outstretched branches, though it's possible they're coming not from the creature's head, but from what it's actually sitting on. The baby, which in some respects takes the form of almost a deformed version of the Buddha, is gigantic, dwarfing the captain in size, and sits slouched against what looks like a bed of foul, vein-covered tentacles, or even possibly umbilical cords. Emblazoned upon its swollen stomach is the kanji for the word conceal, with the individual letters written on either side of a huge vertical incision. 
Purple smog seeps along the floor, though it's unclear if this is the same toxin the original Barnkai produced, or if this time it's just for theatrics. With a grin, Mayuri comments that this is an altered Bankai and is a variant of Konjiki Ashisogi Jizo. He claims this new form was created, however, by modifying the old Bankai, so it seems unlikely to me that the old Bankai could ever actually return. That being said, if Mayuri simply called out the original Bankai's name, I wonder what would happen. If this truly is only a variant of that original form, then presumably they're able to exist side by side somehow. Regardless, considering Matai Fukuin Shotai's ability, honestly, I can't see why he'd ever really want to bring his original Bankai back. Like many of the best Bankai, Matai Fukuin Shotai possesses only one ability, but it's so all-encompassing and incredibly powerful that it makes this altered Bankai impossibly dangerous. The Matai Fukuin Shotai is capable of birthing a brand new Ashisogi Jizo from its hideous form that corresponds to the data collected by Mayuri throughout the fight so far. Thanks to this data, the newly born Ashisogi Jizo, which resembles a naked, more humanoid version of the golden baby from before, will be poised to counter whatever the enemy's abilities are. And it seems as though the newborn Ashisogi Jizo can potentially have as many abilities or countering factors as Mayuri himself can muster. It all comes down to the amount and quality of data that he himself collects. In this particular instance, Mayuri has prepared his Bankai with the data necessary to enable it to almost perfectly counter Pernida and its shrift the compulsory in numerous ways. With a shrill shriek, Matai Fukuin Shotai gives birth to an Ashisogi Jizo and a golden baby with nerves covering the surface layer of its body spills out onto the battlefield in a graphic scene. As soon as it draws breath, it screams at the top of its lungs in pain. Even the light touch of wind on its exposed skin is enough to cause it excruciating agony, but Mairi doesn't care about that. He only cares about the fact this creature is now purpose-built to defeat his enemy. Pernida attempts to attack the newborn with its nerves, but as soon as they attach to the creature, Ashisogi Jizo's skin simply peels away. Mayuri then reveals that it was born with its nerves on the outside, and that network of nerves is made up of 70,000 individual layers. For its shrift to work, Pernida needs to be able to connect its own nerves to the victim, but this Ashisogi Jizo was born with the perfect natural counter. When something makes contact with one of its 70,000 external layers, Ashisogi Jizo simply sheds that layer. The skin peels away like nothing, and so along with the baby's skin, Pernida's nerves are simply stripped away on contact, seemingly giving this Ashisogi Jizo the ultimate, almost endless defense, specifically tailored to Pernida's compulsory. But that's not even all. I mentioned earlier that it was crucial that Mayuri realized how Pernida was able to constantly evolve just before activating Bankai. Knowing that any of Pernida's severed parts can simply regrow into a brand new arm, Mayuri sends that last minute piece of data to his Zanpak toe, ensuring that Ashisogi Jizo has another natural advantage up its sleeve. It was born without any teeth, meaning that when it goes to devour Pernida, it won't accidentally chew it to pieces, allowing it to rapidly and exponentially multiply inside the Bankai's stomach. This is all really fantastic stuff, and I especially love as well how Pernida turns this power against Ashisogi Jizo later on, when the Sternritter itself learns the ability to shed its own skin. But we go into all of that and more in our detailed battle analysis if you want to check it out. This Bankai really is perfect for Mayuri, and even feels a bit meta on Kubo's part as well. As one of Bleach's foremost scientists, Mayuri has always stood out for his absurd level of preparation, allowing him to counter virtually any ability that comes his way. Of course, perhaps the most famous example is when Xyloporo tries to destroy Mayuri's internal organs, only for Mayuri to reveal he replaced them all 
upon seeing what the Espada could do in his previous battle with Uryu Ishida. Xyloporo counters with the perfectly reasonable and logical counter by saying it's barely been an hour since he revealed that power to Uryu, to which Mayuri's and Kubo's only response is to simply say, and yet I managed it. For Kubo to take this aspect of Mayuri's character and infuse it into his own Bankai is wonderful, and it adds an additional layer to Mayuri as well. We as readers know now that during a fight, he's constantly taking in data on everything the enemy shows him to feed into his Bankai. Actually, how this data is transmitted is unclear. Does Mairi simply need to think about an aspect of his opponent for Matai Fuquin Shotai to begin building up a counter to it? Or does he have to physically observe that with his own eyes? Because we see this Bankai so fleetingly, its true scope is totally unknown. What are its weaknesses? How limitless are the counters that it can manifest? Let's look, for example, at a hypothetical standoff between Mairi and somebody like Yamamoto. Presumably, Matai Fuquin Shotai would be able to spawn an Ashisogi Jizo that was, uh, let's say, completely immune to fire, and maybe it has extraordinarily tough skin, so Yamamoto couldn't just shatter it with his fists. I guess it's possible for Mairi to create a being with an entire laundry list of possible counters, the main point to consider is whether Mayuri would be able to survive long enough to acquire all that necessary data, which is a huge factor with this new Bankai when you consider this altered form is almost completely reactionary in its abilities. And of course, Mayuri himself is still as vulnerable as he ever was, even with a giant monster baby trying to defend him. In fact, does Mayuri potentially have a one-up on every other captain now. He already knows so much about their capabilities, so presumably he can immediately transmit that data to his Zan Pak To when the fight begins. He mentions in the Thousand Year Blood War arc that he knows the Bankai of every other captain, so would he be able to create an Ashisogi Jizo with perfect counters to them all? It feels like an amazing new avenue for Mayuri to potentially blackmail other captains, being like, you know, I know your Bankai's weaknesses, and my Bankai can create something that can perfectly counter them, so, you know, you best back off. What's interesting as well is presumably Mayuri only gets one chance with this Bankai, unless, I suppose, he summons it again. He would have to disengage his Bankai and then re-summon it. If an enemy reveals a brand new ability after an Ashisogi Jizo is born, it seems likely Mayuri and his Bankai wouldn't be able to do anything about it, about an ability that they weren't able to see beforehand and therefore create a counter for, unless the Matai Fuquin Shotai can continuously give birth to new and improved babies as the fight progresses. But of course, thematically, this new Bankai works well for Mayuri too, outside of just being a meta-commentary on his preparedness. This idea of his Bankai continuously creating new life and, I guess, going through some form of trial and error, especially if Mayuri has to re-engage his Bankai to counter a new ability that's only revealed to him later on in the fight, it's analogous to Mayuri's own desire and trials and tasks to create a self-sustaining Konpaku from nothing that he himself went through. In that sense, his Zanpak To now even more closely resembles his own soul. But that's pretty much it for Mayuri Kurotsuchi's new and improved, quite literally, Bankai. I don't think we've quite seen enough of it yet, to say whether or not I prefer it to the original one. Certainly, the original form of his Bankai has a more iconic, more memorable design, but I really do like the creativity behind this altered version's ability. I love how self-aware it is. Kubo knows that he likes to mess around with the suspension of disbelief when it comes to Mayuri, so he decided to bundle that into an actual in-universe power. I like it, and I wonder if it'll get a little more time to shine in the anime. But that's it for the video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think of Myri's new 
altered Bankai that he reveals in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, Konjiki Ashisogi Jizo Matai Fukuin Shotai. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Do you prefer it to his original Bankai? What kind of limitations does this new Bankai have? How would it work when coming up against someone like I used in my example, like Yamamoto? How would it actually work? What kind of counters can this thing create? Does it have any limits at all? If not, this is probably one of the most dangerous Bankai in the entire series, so long as Mayuri can survive long enough to actually acquire the necessary data. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't done already. Give the video a thumbs up. And until next time, I'll catch you later. And I'll see you then.